Hey kids, Coach Crouch here. Hope you're enjoying your Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I am. Uh, some more uh, lecture videos here over uh, Latin America. Uh, these are chapter 9, 10 notes. Uh, there'll be a quiz on this tomorrow. Uh, and also the one from the day before. <clears throat> having to do with the physical geography of Latin America. So make sure you watch these videos. Uh, again, they're entertaining and also educational. So please enjoy. Have fun. Have a good Tuesday. And uh, sit back and enjoy the show. We ended yesterday's uh, presentation talking about the major islands of Latin America, the Greater Antilles and Lesser Antilles, and the countries they include. But I wanted to show you some maps uh, of some of these areas. Here's the Bahamas, um, all through here Grand Bahamas, Nas uh, Nassau, Nassau. Um, all these islands in here, Bahamas, there's Cuba. Um, that's part of it, and this is Florida right here, <clears throat> the, the uh, tip of Florida. So you're looking at Florida. Here's Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and not too far away we have the uh, Nassau, Bahamas, and things like that. Here's another illustration: the Bahamas. Here's Florida, the tip of Florida, the Bahamas, Cuba, Grand Cayman Islands, which I went to on a cruise. Here's Jamaica, and then you get down to Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. You can see that. And then Turks and Caicos, all of vacation spots down this area. Lesser Antilles, these are smaller islands. Uh, Grenada, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, St. Lucia, all these islands right through here. Again, hot spots for your vacations. Mineral, mineral and energy resources of the area of South America, Latin America. Uh, there are tons of minerals in the area. Gold, silver, iron, copper. Uh, nickel to name a few. Uh, if you watch Gold Rush right now, they're in Guyana, which is in the northern part of South America, searching for gold, but also they find diamonds in the uh, in the ground. So that's kind of something if you watch Gold Rush, you get some great uh, views of South America, at least the climate and vegetation of South America. Venezuela, Mexico, major oil reserves. Venezuela especially is huge in the oil business. Tons of oil come from there. Uh, that's one of those things that keeps their country relevant as far as on the national scene because of its oil uh, reserves and the oil business that they're part of. Brazil, very rich in hydroelectric power. And the reason for that, tons of rivers and river systems. Tons of rivers equals lots of hydroelectricity, and that's what they're big on. Trinidad, natural gas is big there. Um, but Latin America in general... Oil, coal, natural gas, hydroelectricity, uranium, a lot of different energy sources coming out of Latin America. So uh, a lot of people down there trying to get those things out of the ground. Climates of the area, tropical, uh, tropical wet, tropical wet and dry. Central America and the Caribbean, you're talking about uh, the area in between Mexico and South America. And in the Caribbean, there's a tropical wet climate. It's hot and rainy year-round, and it's right there on the equator okay so it has a lot to do with that tropical wet and dry Brazil Colombia Argentina it's mostly warm and seasonal rains those are the two uh, climates there uh, the dry parts uh, we have a semi-arid and desert climates in Latin America Mexico and Brazil Uruguay and Argentina are semi-arid which means they're dry a lot of the time but have a little bit of rain and then you have the deserts Okay, parts of northern Mexico, the coast of Peru, northern Chile, and the southern part of Argentina are all desert climates. It means very dry and very, very little rain. The mid-latitude climates, humid subtropical, okay, different parts of South America, rainy winters, hot, humid summers. We have Mediterranean parts, uh, parts of Chile along the western coast, hot and dry summers, cool, moist winters. Marine West Coast, oops, sorry about that, that's my telephone. Uh, mar Marine West Coast and parts of southern Chile and Argentina. And then the highlands, okay, which varies from latitude, or altitude, I'm sorry, uh, from moderate to cold. Remember, South America, kind of like North America, stretches very far north and south. It gets us into different latitude areas. Remember, latitude is the most important thing when talking about climate. 
And because of its stretch north and south, its vertical stretch, it incorporates and it has a lot of climates, different climate zones within Latin America. So make sure you uh, understand that. Slash and burn method, we're talking about ways to improve agriculture, ways to uh, take land that really isn't good for farming because of trees and such, and make it, making it good for farming, at least temporarily. And slash and burn means they're going to cut down the trees and burn everything up. The rest of the trees, grass, brush, everything. Uh, the effects, yes, you get uh, temporary land for uh, farming, uh, but at some point the soil becomes exhausted, meaning they don't have uh, the nutrients in the ground to support agriculture, so they move on and cut some others down. Slash and burn. Here are some pictures of the slash and burn, cutting on trees, lighting them up, letting them burn away, and eventually turn that into agricultural land. Here's kind of an after shot of what it would look like. Cut the trees, burn them, and now they gotta go dig the stuff out and use it for farming. Terrace farming. Uh, cutting the uh, into the side of a mountain or a hillside you want to make like it's like step like uh, fields small fields kind of cut on the side of hills and slopes making land that wasn't usable for farming now usable for farming okay uh, also reduces soil erosion but it's a very uh, innovative way to create farmland the next slide here shows you some pictures of terrace farming you can see kind of the cut into the size of the hill and they're kind of step like It'd be a giant person stepping on these things but you can see these little pieces of land they can use to grow things and you see these right here these are two people cutting or planting uh, land or seeds or whatever maybe who knows not land obviously that was kind of not very smart but taking care of the land push and pull factors that lead to uh, growing cities in Latin America, there's a lot of push factors, factors you know, that uh, make people leave the cities or, or make people leave the countryside, pushing them out, and they go into the cities. Um, and there's a lot of things: uh, lack of jobs, the lack of uh, ability to grow uh, produce effectively, um, could be unrest in the area, whatever it may be. But people tend to move to the cities, and there's also some positives to that. There's also negatives. Uh, cities grow rapidly, and if a city grows too rapidly, then there's not an infrastructure uh, put in place to deal with the people. Remember, infrastructure is things that happen that make your everyday life happen in your city. Uh, and if you don't have enough infrastructure in place, then it was going to lead to a lot of problems. The cities you see listed, Mexico City, Rio de Janeiro... Buenos Aires, all these cities are growing rapidly because of these massive amount of people who are moving into them. Uh, some of these side effects or bad things that have happened because of the growing of cities. Uh, you have what we like to call slums, very poor areas uh, because there's not enough housing. Uh, unemployment tends to happen because you have people who need jobs who can't find enough jobs because not enough exist. And because unemployment happens, usually crime rises drug use rises and leads to crime and then uh, another effect is the uh, levels of pollution tend to rise if you have a lot of people there especially if they all have vehicles but those are some of the bad things of uh, rapidly growing cities and one of the last things economically that really helps Latin America is tourism some parts are more uh, touristy than others uh, but it is an important part of some of these countries, especially the islands, uh, economics. Some advantages of tourism, they create businesses and jobs. A lot of these countries, like Jamaica, if you ever go there, uh, we went on a cruise. Uh, lots of jobs created because of tourism. Okay, brings money into the economy, all the money you spend, and they can help reduce the income, ba income gap between the rich and the poor. Some of the disadvantages... Uh, could be a lot of congestion, people moving to these areas uh, to try to benefit from the tourist uh, business. Pollution, uh, res resentment along the locals, meaning they don't want these tourists hanging around their area. And uh, the other ones that are lifted. This one right here is kind of a big one. Some of the profits do not always go into the country in which they're generated. That money, that money goes somewhere else, uh, which obviously can, can cause an issue. Um, that's it for the PowerPoint presentation. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Here's a picture of the Amazon River. Don't laugh at my hat. It's pretty neat. Some questions and things you may need to remember for the quiz. Slash and burn method. Might want to know what that is. Why the uh, so many climate zones in South America or Latin America. What the uh, big natural resource of Venezuela is. What Brazil is known for as far as uh, their main thing. Uh, and then what is terraced farming. If you know those things, you got a chance to pass the quiz. See you guys. And I hope to make everybody sleepy. See ya.